Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Transcend! That's right. One year ago today, I purchased this Grand Design Transcend 261BH. And after almost 5,000 miles, what do I like about my Transcend? What do I not like about my Transcend? What changes and or upgrades have I made? And what has broken? And if I knew then what I know now, would I still have purchased this Transcend? Let's get into it. Be sure to stick around to the end for the blooper roll. In case you guys are new to the channel, let me give you a quick walk around of this Transcend. Model is 261BH. BH stands for bunkhouse. She's a wee bit dirty. It is the end of February here in Florida. So the oak pollen is all over the place. So everything is yellow. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy that was a quick walk around on the outside. Let's go on inside. I'll give you a quick tour of the inside and then we'll get into the likes and dislikes. I'm not gonna give you a full in-depth tour. I've already done one of those. So if you wanna see the in-depth tour of this Transcend, I will put a card up there and a link in the description below. I will warn you, it is the very first video that I did on YouTube. Be kind. <laughs> Coming in and to the right is the uh, master bedroom. You've got storage there and there and along on the top coming out of the master bedroom we've got the kitchen refrigerator more storage over here the recliners the dinette the bunk rupert's little nook back there and the bathroom with a squeaky door. All right, jumping right in with the likes. Number one on the list, the layout. I absolutely love this layout. When the slide goes out, it gives me plenty enough room to maneuver around in here, and the dogs can walk around as well. I do like the bedroom. The bed is plenty big enough for myself and the dogs, and the bathroom. The shower is big. I have no problem getting in the shower. Toilet is positioned well and the sink is adequate. Miss May is sitting on the recliner right now, but one of the reasons why I picked this particular floor plan was the recliners. I wanted recliners and not a couch or anything like that. And it is directly across from the TV. That was another must have for me. The next item that I really like in this Transcend is the amount of storage. Both sides of the bed have a large closet a little storage nook underneath and there's plenty of storage above the bed also there's a lot of storage under the bed as well one can never have enough storage in an rv these little cubbies here are really good for storing your shoes plenty of cabinet space the storage outside is very good too if you have any tips on how to organize your bays outside Leave me a link below. I really need to do something. They're kind of getting out of hand. The fridge. I know I have said it many times before, but I love this 12 volt fridge. There is plenty of storage in there and the freezer as well. This was another reason why I went with this particular model. It had the recliners and the 12 volt fridge that I wanted. I also love the outdoor kitchen. I use this thing all the time when I'm camping and I use the outdoor fridge as an extension of the indoor fridge. The ducted AC is really nice as well. I think it helps keep it quiet when the AC is running. Another like on this Transcend is it has a 125 watt solar panel on the roof that keeps the battery charged at all times. Currently I am not plugged in and you can see it is at 99.4%. It is about 11 o'clock in the morning. I love the overall look of this Transcend. I like the black, the white, and the grays. I think it looks super sharp. Now, let's check out the things that I don't like on this Transcend. Spoiler alert, there's only three items. The first thing is the space between the bed and the wall. You can't walk straight through without hitting the wall like that. You do have to turn yourself sideways to get through to this side of the bed. Is it a deal breaker? No, 
but if you could just have given like another inch it would have been perfect the next item on the dislike list is the stove it is way too small to get anything big in here. There is a ton of space between here and the bottom. I don't know why they couldn't have dropped this down a little bit further to give you more cooking space. I did do a video on cooking Christmas dinner in this stove. If you wanna check that out, there'll be a card up there in the corner and also a link in the description below. Leave me a comment below. Do you guys find it easy or difficult to cook in your RV oven? And the third item that's on the dislike list is the construction of this drawer that is directly underneath the stove. As you can see, it's broken. They have a tiny, teeny tiny piece of plywood back there and that broken piece that's on the floor is the only thing that attaches this drawer to keep it secure. I think it could have done a little bit better in that grand design and it probably wouldn't have cost much more money. And that's really it. Those are the only things that I dislike about this Transcend. I pretty much knew when I walked into this on the dealer lot that this was the floor plan for me. Does anybody else out there have a Transcend 261BH? Drop me a comment below. What do you like and not like about your Transcend? And for anyone that doesn't have a Transcend, drop me a comment below. What model do you have and what do you like and not like about your rig? Now let's get into the changes that I made and or upgrades. Starting in the master bedroom, I did add a foam topper to the mattress that came with it. Yes, I haven't upgraded the entire mattress on it. It is on the list of things to do, but you know, things cost money. And since I'm not yet monetized on YouTube, I don't make any money off of these videos. They pray into Jesus next door. That was pretty loud. I'm sure you heard that one. If you're liking this video so far, go ahead and hit that like button. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel to follow myself, David, Rupert, and May on all of our RV adventures. Continuing on in the bedroom, the only other change that I've made in here is I've added some stackable shelves to put my clothes in. And I lied. I forgot about this over here. <laughs> That is a hanging laundry bag. So instead of having clothes piled up in the in the corner or on the bed or under the bed, these guys just stick on the wall and dirty clothes go in there. Also have another one in the back bunk. Two upgrades that I've done on the outside of the camper. I added Halo View side cameras and their backup camera. This is the passenger side camera. They are wireless. Driver side camera and the backup camera. I do have plans on doing a video on the, that camera system. I just haven't had time to do it yet. I also added the Camco 28 gallon portable RV waste tank. I did do a video on the RV portable waste tank. If you wanna check out how to use one of those, there'll be a card up here on the top and also a link in the description below. Moving back inside into the kitchen, I am in storage mode right now, so I don't have all my knives on here. I pulled a couple out just so you can see this, but this is a magnetic knife holder that is right here next to the stove that I keep all of my kitchen knives on. Saves a lot of counter space. Moving back into the bunkhouse, you can see the biggest change that I made is I removed the top bunk. It went about right about in here, right above that back window, and you had a top and a bottom bunk. For anybody who hasn't seen any of my past videos, you'll know that my brother Kevin, aka Worm, spends four months out of the year with me here in Florida. So that is why I removed that top bunk to give him more of his own room feel. I also changed out the curtains at the in the bunk too so he can have his own privacy. Normally if we're out camping I have to work my day job as well so this is where I set up to work and that gives Kevin his own room to be able to watch TV, watch movies, do whatever he wants. Would also be good for any guests that come along. Another addition here in the bunk is the TV. I attached a TV mount to what was left of the top bunk and it works out really well. Under the bunk here I added a three drawer cabinet. This is so my brother has a place to store all of his clothes or if guests are here they can put their clothes in here and most importantly it leaves enough room so Rupert can get back to his cubby. Right Rupi? He's being shy today. We just got back from a walk. It's kind of hot today so he's cooling down. Moving into the bathroom the only change that I made to the shower was the oxygenetic shower head and I added two baskets to be able to put uh, shower bottles and things like that in here. These have held up very well. I got them on Amazon. If I remember the name of them or if I can find it in my order history, I will leave a link for those in the description below. So those are pretty much all the changes that I've made. Now let's get into some upgrades that I've added. Coming back into the bathroom, what this is here is a washing machine. 
wash and a spin. I also have an electric dryer. And if you'd like to see how the washer and dryer work in the camper, and maybe it's something you'd like to add to your camper, I'll leave a card up at the top. Also, I will leave a link to that video in the description below. I also added a portable dishwasher. Like I said before, I am in storage mode. I'm at home right now. This does not live here when in use. I haven't done a video on this yet, but I'm going to. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the portable dishwasher video as well. I also added a diesel heater. Yep, you heard me right, a diesel heater. I take several trips up north in the fall, winter time when it is cool. And one thing I noticed is I was burning through propane left and right using the onboard propane heater. It is still installed on here and I still use it occasionally, but the diesel heater has become my primary source of heat when it's really cold. If you haven't seen the video on the diesel heater install, I too will leave a card for that up at the top and a link in the description below. All right, so how has this Transcend held up after one year and over 5,000 miles? What's broke? The first item that broke is actually here in the bathroom and it is the vent. As you can see, it no longer opens. I do want to replace that with one of the Max Air fans, but once again, it costs money. Next item is the trim here in the slide in the kitchen. You can see that has come off. I can probably fix that myself. I just haven't done it yet. And the last thing that has broken in here is actually what you saw earlier was this drawer in the back there. I'm going to say that this was probably my fault. I don't know if you can tell, but this is a cast iron pan and it's pretty heavy. This drawer never stayed closed on travel days. So every time I would come in here after a travel day, it would be open. And I'm assuming having the cast iron pan in here was too much for that under constructed area that is supposed to hold this drawer up. And it was just too much and broke. And for the next item that is broke is actually outside and entirely my fault. Has nothing to do with construction or anything like that. It is 100% my fault. And that would be this right here. I'm in the back corner here by the outdoor kitchen. And what had happened was I was coming out of my driveway and clipped this back corner on a post that used to be uh, next to my driveway for a gate opener and it peeled back this corner. You can see, I don't know if you can really see it. It's a little bent up there, but peeled all of that back and I have no idea what to do with it. So I put a turnabon tape on it. It's been holding up fairly well. I know I'm going to have to get it fixed at some point, but I'm not really sure who or where to take it to get it fixed. Fingers crossed that a turnabon holds. Those are my likes, dislikes, what I've changed and upgraded in this camper after owning it for one year. Now, the big question is, if I knew then what I know now, would I still have purchased this camper? Absolutely 100%. This camper has allowed me to experience things that I haven't been able to do for quite a long time. I've met a lot of great people out on the road as well. Had some pretty fun experiences with my brother and Rupert in May. And believe it or not, we rode out Hurricane Ian in this camper in South Florida. So I would say that if this camper can handle 80 mile per hour winds coming at it broadside and it not tip over, I am grand design for life. Now, in all seriousness, I absolutely love this camper. It has been a phenomenal experience owning this thing going around to some of the different state parks and campgrounds. I also use this when I travel for work so I can bring Rupert and May with me. And now all we need to do is start adding more states onto our map. I know most people have these outside, but I want to be able to see it every day. It gives me more motivation to start putting some more stickers on this map. And there we have it. As we say, happy one year birthday to this 2022 Grand Design Transcend. 261BH. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe so you don't miss our RV adventures. And until the next video, we'll see you next time. Happy birthday! Well, shit. <laughs> Take two. They sing into Jesus next door. To get through it, 
Oh, right in the eye. Oh, 